In last video, we got introduced to the dependency injection of Spring Framework, and in this video, we are going to look at that in some more details. There are two things basically to understand. One is how the application context gets created and how to put objects into the application context. And the second is how to refer to those objects from your code so that you don't have to use the new keyword and bind your code to concrete classes. The example that we saw in the last video, you use the resource annotation to refer to an object in the application context and use the component annotation to put an object of a type called mail sender into the application context. And in this video, we are going to look at more ways to do these things. What you see on the screen now is the documentation of the resource annotation. And here you see how it is used. The resource annotation takes a name parameter, which is the name of the object in the application context, which is to be injected into the field or the setter method. Let me tell you here that every object in the application context is given a name. So coming back to our example here, actually we should have written name is equal to mail sender. And because we omitted the name, it took the field name as the default name. And then it tried to find an object in the application context by name mail sender. Coming to our mock mail sender class, we are using the component annotation here for putting an object of this mock mail sender class into application context, which actually is equivalent to writing like this and this becomes the name of the object that will be instantiated and put into the application context in the absence of this name by default it takes the name of the class in camel cache so what we now see that this resource annotation here is trying to find out we'll try to find out an object of name mail sender but in our uh, here in the mock mail sender class we see that the object will be named as mock mail sender and so here this resource annotation will fail to find out an object having name mail sender and then it will fall back to trying to find an object of type mail sender in the application context and because our mock mail sender is actually a mail sender type so it will find that object and it will be given that object. So summarizing what we learned is the resource annotation takes a name parameter and if no name parameter is given, then the field name is used as the name of the object to be pulled from the application context. And in the application context, this component annotation can take a parameter, default parameter, and in the absence of that default parameter, which will be the name of the object, uh, in the application context. In the absence of that, the name of the class in camel case becomes the name of the object there. You can go through this portion of the reference, spring reference manual to uh, have a more detailed understanding of it when required. But what I told you should be sufficient for you to proceed. Let me now ask you a question. Suppose we had another object of type mail sender in our application context then how will our this code behave or more precisely let me actually create another class of type mail sender and then ask you this question paste i'll paste okay and let me name the new class as SMTP mail center and if we go to the class yeah sending just let me change it sending SMTP mail to now when the application will start we will have two instances of type mail sender in our application context because this is also annotated with the component 
and the mock mail sender is also annotated with the component. Now our spring will get confused here. As we had discussed that it will first try to find out an object of name mail sender and because we do not have an object by name mail sender in the application context but we have uh, two objects one is named as mock mail sender and the other is named as assemptive mail sender it will not be able to find an object of name having name mail sender then it will try to find an object of type mail sender and then it will find two objects of type mail sender one mock mail sender and another assemptive mail sender so it will get confused and how to get rid of this situation first let me show you how it will behave if we try to run it we got some error and we continue and if you if we want to see the errors and look at what is having no qualifying bin of type mail sender is defined expected single matching bin but found two mock mail sender smp mail sender exactly what we expected so how to go ahead you now know we have to provide a name resource name is equal to SMTP, the SMTP mail sender. Then the object which has got the name SMTP mail sender will be injected here. Or you can also change the name of a component to just mail sender. All right now, this SMTP mail sender class will be instantiated and the object that will be put into the application context will get the name as mail sender and now our code should run let's try you see the code is now running let me now tell you about one more way to handle this situation we could use the primary annotation of spring framework And let us now remove this name of this component so that it uh, defaults to SMTP mail sender. And now, if we run this code, it should run. Yeah, it is now running. What is happening here is when Spring sees that more than one object in application context is becoming eligible to be injected into a place like this it will prefer injecting the object which will be having a primary annotation i think it's a good time for me to tell you when does this injection takes place that is when will the reference to the mail sender object in the application context will be injected here to this field to tell you that let me first tell you that the rest controller annotation that you see here is like the component annotation that means this rest controller annotation will tell spring to create an object of type root controller and put that into application context so when that root controller object will be created and put into the application context that time spring will be injecting this reference into this field of root controller class and while spring will instantiate an object of this class and put that into application context it will also check for the setter methods which are annotated with the resource annotation and will call them for example suppose we had another field mock mail sender and a setter method for it suppose we had a setter method like this and 
that was annotated with a resource annotation that will be called as well that means this field will also get a reference of an appropriate object from the application context similar to resource annotation we also have auto word annotation in spring and we also have inject annotation and let us discuss about auto word annotation now auto word annotation is similar to resource annotation but it is more powerful in the sense that you can use auto word annotation not only in setter methods but on any method including the constructor method for example using auto word annotation and uh, on a constructor method we can write our code this way and this should work let me simplify the code a bit i'll remove this uh, field i'll change this field to just mail sender and i'll change it to mail sender this to mail sender and this to mail sender as well this code should inject a mail sender and which mail sender among the two that we have will be injected this one because it is having the primary annotation let's see if this works yes this seems to work and if we visit our application and then if we see the log sending smtp mail to so it is working if we remove the primary annotation from the smtp mail sender class then spring will get confused while injecting the mail sender here and it will throw error so in that case we need to help spring choose which mail sender has to be injected here and for that we use the qualifier annotation and the same annotation has to be put there in the smtp mail sender class now while spring will make the application context apart from the name of the objects in the application context it also maintains a field called qualifier and the value of the field will be taken from here and then while uh, the injection takes place based on this qualifier spring filters the object which has to be injected here so now let's see if this works yes this seems to be working and if we now go to our application and then if we see here in the logs we see it is working let me show you one more thing here if we skip this qualifier annotation here and here if we provide the name of the object that is smtp mail sender then also it should work and let's see if that works seems to be working if we refresh and if we see here yeah it seems to work so what is happening here is that the objects in the application context if they do not have a qualifier the name acts as the qualifier for them so in this tutorial we looked at how to inject objects from application context into our code uh, we have not covered everything the spring is very vast but we have covered good enough to write decent applications and in the next tutorial we are going to look at how to configure the application context of a spring application